everybody, welcome back to the underground lair where we have a stew mac kit that uh, my customer that if you remember the Rickenbacker base, Rickenbacker, anyhow he built this for his son at Christmas. Okay, I hope you heard what I said in the opening, but uh, here is our stew mac kit. They say that, it, that uh, they do most of the work for you. It's a um, 24 and 9, or a 9 sixteenths scale. Uh, it's got a mahogany body, maple neck. Uh, the, everything's pre-wired, but let's take a look and see how much of the work they did because I don't think they did. So, first thing we're going to do is, well, let's, let's just bring it up the, up the pitch. We hit the red subscribe button. Boom. All right. Sort of has a um, a weird um, sound there on the B. I don't like that. It's from the nut. See, so it goes away there. All right, so they obviously didn't do all the work for them. Tuners kind of do feel cheap. They don't feel like a Wilkinson tuner. There's no name on them, but I'm sure they'll do the job. With everything up to pitch, you go to the 17th fret. Actually, this is more of a Gibson scale, 24 and 9 sixteenths. Let's go to the 12th fret. We should have um, 564s and 364s, and right now we have a very unplayable 864s and 964s. Check the relief. I'm going to try to go for 10 thou. Oh, and yeah, the nuts definitely cut wrong. It's way too high. Uh, so go to the 17th fret. I want 10 thou. And we could put a ham sandwich in there. Too much relief. All right, so string choice is Ernie Ball Ultra Slinky 10 to 48s. Something different for us. Okay, so we have to uh, take some of the bow out of the neck. You have to tighten the truss rod. And when you do that, you're going to want to take the tension off of the strings so that you're not working against the strings and the wood. So you make it, take your tension off. You use four millimeter truss rod wrench put in here and righty tighty can give it a little bit of a turn now we tune it up and uh, we're going to double check our relief holding it to 17th checking at the 7th with a 10 thou And I think we could live with that. Okay, first fret action. It is really high. I think we could probably put about two of these 20,000 feeler gauges in there. So let's fix that with some files. We're just going to go ahead and move the E string out of the slot so we can get a file in there. All right, so we got our files here. We're starting with a 50 and we're going to bring it down, straight down, and then you angle towards the tuner. 
so that you only have a small area touching the string. Put string back in there, tune it back up, and then we're going to measure again. Twenty thou. Still not quite where I want to be. Take the same fifty th fifty. Take it down just a little bit more. You don't want to take off more. It's easier to take a little bit off at a time as opposed to having to put material back. You can't do that unless you play with super glue. So we're tuning back up and measure it again. We can go as low as 18 thou. And let's take a look at 18 thou. And that seems to work just about right. Yeah. And when you're done at that level, you make sure you don't have any buzz at the first fret or anywhere in the open string. achieved 18 thou across all of the strings since I brought the 18 or the E down to 18 now we need to go ahead and check the string height and since it's a well at least close to a Gibson scale we're going to go with Gibson numbers I want five 64 on the base side and we're going to work it down to three well we're going to aim for three 64 most likely end up closer to four 64 on the treble side so i'm not going to have you go and watch all this but uh, one thing i do like to keep um in the forefront whenever we're dealing with these sort of saddles is you want to keep the saddle level to the f bridge plate uh, each saddle unto itself and make sure both uh, grub screws are engaged to the bridge plate because you don't want it riding on one wheel so to speak Okay, we have these sharp fret ends that we need to take care of. I have two files that we're going to use, and we're going to go ahead and uh, polish the frets, clean the fingerboard, and uh, yeah, let's get this neck off of here so that we can do all that. Okay, so we got the neck off of here, and we've got some nasty fret ends. I use this file. It's got just the right angle to go ahead and run down the edge of each side of the neck and that will take the extra pieces of metal off. And you got to be careful to not hit the nut, bust off a piece of wood by doing that. So uh, make sure you you're careful there. This is a two 
step process. You got to take all the metal down to the wood and then you have to shape the ends of the file with a little file, which I'll show you here in just a bit. All right, so I'm going to reach over here and grab my Fret Dagger 2.0 from Fret Guru. Uh, take some of the tape off to keep me from getting blisters. Just going to do the uh, corners here. There's a extra large edge and a medium large edge. I'm using the medium large edge you see right there. Uh, Anyhow, I use this at that same angle that the other tool was, but this takes the edge off the front and the back of what the uh, straight edge that I just made with that angle um, tool. This way it'll feel really smooth while you're running your hand up and down the neck. Okay, so another thing we're going to do is we're going to, since we had to slot the heck out of these files, or the uh, nut, uh, at least up into the G string, we're going to take a little bit of the top off of that nut and kind of uh, shape it a little bit. Taped off the fingerboard for protection. Put my finger there to stop any kind of incursion into the area that doesn't need it. A little bit of a angle that way. A little bit of angle that way. Okay, we can still go down a little bit on the base side. Just make it a little bit more friendly. Just roll that edge a little bit. And do the same thing over here. That's much better. Yeah, that way the the um, the string is not sitting way down in a valley. That'll cause overtones, and we don't want no overtones. So we went through and we polished the frets. We took all the sharp fret ends off. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a. Don't worry, this, this rag's had enough, so I'm going to put a new rag down on the bench when we're done with this. Just clean the wood. I did that before, I'd have all kind of strings hanging off my rag. Oiling the fingerboard, I forgot to say. In this lovely cold Pennsylvania weather, you don't want this to dry too much and crack on you. I have a feeling it's going to absorb quite a bit of this oil. Wow, it's just soaking it up. up 15 1500 grit
Yeah, that looks much better. Come back and hit it with some 24 again. There, yeah, that took all the tool marks off. We got 24. Cool. All right. Okay, now we're gonna pop and Z neck on. That's a nice tight pocket. All right, so we'll get our first screw. Oh, go that way. Always back them up, let them fall into the pre existing threads, and then I tighten it down. I never use power tools, you heat up the uh, metal quickly, and with Most brands of guitars, they just use the cheapest metal available. Learned that the hard way. Long, long time ago. How nice that fingerboard looks. Nice and shiny. Okay, as you see, we are all strung up here. Get these danglies out of the way. Super slinky danglies. All right. So we must stretch in these strings. Check our, oh, that needs tightened. That's no good. How's this one? That one's okay. All right. Let's check our relief. Seventeenth fret, ten thou at the seven, <clears throat> seventh fret. Oh, I like that. Before we go into intonation, pick up height. Ooh, perfect. Hey, they nailed that one. Check this side. I think that'll have to come up. Yep. And that has to go down. So... to go down. Split the difference. 
bit more difference. There we are. Let's see what this feels like. That still has to go down. Good. Let's see what our intonation feels like. A little sharp. That means the saddle's going to go that way. How big a screw are we dealing with here? Is that a two or is that a one? It's a two. Didn't have to go far. There we are. Hey, is there? He's there. She's there. He's a little flat. Saddle's going to go that way. There it is. And that's also flat. That's going to go that way a little bit more. There we are. Okay, let's plug it into the noise maker and see what it sounds like. Put it together into the noise maker wire. It's for your headphone users. Let's make sure that our wiring is right here. Oh, there we are. We're there. Good. Very nice job he did on the finish on this. Gotta say. Not a big fan of the headstock, but I think that's the way it comes. Anyhow. Yeah. Stumac kit. They say it bolt it together and play. I say you got to do some work to it. So, but for what is it, 200 bucks? You can't go wrong. Oh, yeah, we wanted to let's let's play some notes.
call Buddy and tell him, well, it's going to set overnight. Then I'm going to call Buddy and tell him to come and get it. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us down here in the underground lair where we brought this Stumac kit offset guitar up to par. If you live in the Greater Pittsburgh area and you would like to bring your guitar up to par, send us an instant message here on the Facebooks and we'll get you in line. Uh, take care of the old folks because they're special. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. And most importantly, you have yourself a good night. Peace. Thank you very much. <laughs>